G'day ladies and gentlemen, do you want to learn how to edit those Milky Way images in Lightroom to make them absolutely Mickey Mouse? Today you're about to find out, so stick around and roll that intro. G'day ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me today for something a little bit different. I wanna give you an insight to the latest course that I have released, an ultimate Lightroom course getting anyone from a complete beginner to an advanced level editor in Lightroom. In this course, I give you all 65 raw images so you can go through one by one step with me, showing you the exact workflow that you need to edit your Lightroom images. Everything from landscape, winter, cityscape, blue hour, Milky Way, low light, there is pretty much something for everyone out there. So today, I wanna to show you a little bit of a teaser how to edit those Milky Way images and show you just an insight of this course because I guarantee you for the price that I'm offering this course at, it's a bloody steal, it's an absolute bloody bargain. So let's find out how to edit those Milky Way images. Inside of the library module, we wanna to go to number six, Milky Way. And you're gonna see the tent with a small little faint Milky Way in the background. But today I wanna to show you how to make that Milky Way stand out with colors and also the exposure. Let's head over to the develop module now. And straight away, I wanna look into the color temperature. So color temperature, I always lock down in camera, but right now we've introduced quite a bit of green into the image. So right now I'm gonna to go to automatic and just see what it does. And it does introduce quite a bit of that red which we wanted into the image, but still a little bit too yellow. So once again, we can come back and always adjust this back inside of Lightroom. So on the last lesson, we learned how to reduce all that noise. This is a pretty similar image because we're quite underexposed inside of the image, but we've also got to worry about our highlights now. So we have to worry about two separate things inside of the image. Very dark in the top two thirds, and quite bright in the bottom third. So you have to be really careful with our global adjustments and then make local adjustments later on to get this absolutely perfect. So you're going to see ISO 3200 50 mil F1 25 seconds. Now 50 mil and F1 is because I'm using a manual lens inside of the Fujifilm system. So it's not gonna show up. It's actually a 12 mil system and I was shooting at F2. So don't worry about these settings just here. But right now I wanna go through and add some exposure into the overall image. So we're just gonna keep bumping it up and we're gonna worry about one thing first, the exposure to the highlight of the tent. So I don't wanna blow this tent out because this is one of the main features of the actual image. So I'm gonna just reduce this down to about minus 65. I'm gonna keep bumping this exposure up until we get a happy medium. So for me, that's pretty good right now. I'm gonna drop it back just a little bit so I've got some things to play around with. So just the first thing, the exposure, but we wanna decrease the highlights to protect the tent. But remember, this is globally. We can go through later and make local adjustments to this. Right now, I wanna get the shadows and move it basically as far as we can to get enough information back. Now, personally, I don't want all this information here to be, so if I drag all the way up, I don't want this visually showing because I sort of want the tent to look like it's in the middle of nowhere. So I'm gonna keep it around that 65. You know, so we've got some information there, but not everything. That's what I wanna try and create here. The whites, I'm gonna bump up ever so slightly. And what I'm looking for here, I'm just gonna reset this. And what I want you to look at is specifically in here, inside the Milky Way, the Milky Way core this is called. When we bump up these whites, this is really going to chisel out the Milky Way. Okay, so you can really see it's quite defined now. The blacks is going to do the opposite. It's going to chisel it out, but increase the blacks in the overall image. So you can see now this Milky Way core is very powerful. So we set the blacks. Here it just emphasizes, when we drag it to the left, it just emphasizes the overall image. That's perfect. So what I'm gonna do before I do anything else with the global adjustments, I wanna head down. Because I said to you this is a manual lens, I'm gonna enable profile correction and here I'm gonna go through and you're gonna do the same. This is called a Samyang and it's gonna automatically find it. So Samyang 12 mil F2. So if I click that off, you can see, look at the image right now. Top left, top right, quite a heavy vignette. 
very dark down here. But as soon as I click Enable Profile Correction, look at the image. That is not even the same image almost. It is crazy. So off, on, off, on. So that is the power of lens correction. So you can see now we've got it so much easier of an image to work with. So I'm actually going to drop the exposure down because that actually brought the overall image to become a bit brighter. Now we can introduce some contrast into the image. But once again, we want to be very minute here because it's going to introduce noise into the overall image, which is you know, something what we want to introduce, but not a lot. So I'm going to keep that around 12. Now I want to introduce some vibrance back into the image. So if we go a long way, absolutely terrible, but we want to introduce just a little bit. because so we're going to selectively introduce it, especially into the Milky Way core. That's something we really want to look at. Now I'm just going to drop back the shadows just ever so slightly, and also the blacks ever so slightly, because we still want to remember this is a nighttime image. I'm going to head down to tone curves and do some overall last adjustments, especially to the Milky Way. So highlights we want to increase, lights we want to increase a little bit, not too far. And then this is where we want to do the opposite. So the highlights we want to increase for the core, so if we just turn that off and on, the core and especially down here. So maybe the tent has gone a little bit too far right now. Let's just drop this back to say 25. And then we're going to drop the darks back. Just because we want that night sky to stand out that little bit. And the shadows, I might try and increase the shadows first to see what it looks like. Let's just go 15. So I'm going to toggle that off. So 15 is good. Very subtle, but I'm happy with that. So it's introduced a little bit more clearer to the bottom half, but still allowing the sky to be that darker what we're after. Now moving on to HSL and color. This is where I want to manipulate the sky because the sky, I want to be quite blue and red. This is how it naturally appears. And down the bottom here, I've got quite a bit of green. So I want to go to that hue. I want to go down to this green here, and I want to adjust it back to the yellow. Okay, not too much. And then the blue up here, I want to drag towards the red, sorry. Once again, not too much. So I think with this green here, it has gone a little bit too far. But what I want to do here is actually reset this tone. So hold Alt and reset hue because what I think is actually happening is it's not the hue as much, it's the saturation I'm worried about. So green, that's better. That's so much better. So I'm just gonna go back and show you guys exactly what I've done here. So when I went into hue, obviously I'm not changing the overall saturation of the image. I was trying to create this green down the bottom to become more, more like the top basically. It's blue, but it's never gonna become blue. So I wanted to reduce it in the greens to become a little bit more yellow. But you can see the problem here on top, it's got a color banding it's called. So it wasn't the correct color as underneath. So I could like, you know, move those hues around all day, but you're gonna see it's gonna introduce weird colors into the top. So when I reset that and go into the saturation and therefore go on and get the toggle and move it down, it desaturates the image, and that is more what I'm after. So I don't want to desaturate it fully. I still want some green in there, but not the full green. Okay, that's what I was trying to, trying to do. So that's actually so much better, that there. So what we could go through now and look at is also the red, because we have got red here. We can, you know, obviously desaturate that or saturate it a lot. I want that red to stand out quite a lot because, you know, I put the tent there for a reason to become very apparent in the image. So I want these to sort of stand out and become evident inside of the image. Now, the last thing I want to worry about is there's quite a bit of blue up here. So I want to see just by decreasing the blue, not too much, that was way too much, how much we can get out of it. It's just that tiny, tiny little bit. So you can see now we've made a curve. We've gotten rid of some saturation and we've increased some saturation. So therefore, we want to go through it. Although it might not look completely finished, we're going to do some local adjustments still later. 
getting onto split toning. Okay, this is where split toning comes very powerful because we've got so much highlights and so much shadows. So with my Milky Way photography, I know that the red or the lower end of this half is where I wanna introduce things and quite a lot. So bump that to 20. And right now we wanna go through and find a color that fits inside of the hue. So anything past this until there is going for me, what I personally like. So I like it around here or down towards the red. So it depends if you want a cooler tone, cooler tone, sorry, or warmer tone. So I personally like my Milky Way photography to be cooler. So I'm gonna drop this down to around 12. I'm just gonna to toggle that off and on. Much, much better if you ask me, but it's what you guys personally think. So as I said, the left-hand side, warmer tone, the right-hand side where mine's at would be a, a cooler tone. Once again, with the shadows, we're gonna bump up the saturation and try and find a hue that we like once again. Now for me, I try and match them to become pretty similar colors. I'm gonna make it a little bit more red inside of the shadows. And it's still a little bit too much for me. So maybe if we just go up, oh, there we go, that's, that's better for me. So that's how I personally like my Milky Way photography, just to become that little bit more you know, red in the shadows, and then blue it in the highlights. So I'm just gonna play with the highlights just a little bit. No, definitely, definitely back where I was. So maybe just, we're well, at 270 marks. That's how I personally like my Milky Way photography. It makes the core stand out, and also that blue stand out in, you know, the surrounding part of the Milky Way core. So I'm just gonna that off and on. Milky Way photography, split toning, done. That is a huge, huge difference. Now here you want to make a sharpening down to zero like we did on the previous lesson. Because if we introduce too much sharpening into this image, it's going to introduce noise as we spoke about. So here we want to slide down and go into our noise reduction for luminance. Now I'm going to go not massively because we are on a bigger sensor here. And just to remind you, the more we slide this up in noise reduction, what we're gonna actually achieve is we're going to lose the smaller stars. So if I slide this all the way up, we're going to lose. See how the bigger stars stand out, but the smaller stars don't. They're gone, they're completely gone. So we don't wanna lose this too much. So I find around that 35 to 50 mark where we were on last lesson. But for me, I wanna always try and keep it on the smaller ends, so that 35. Now I'm gonna head down to that color noise and see if we can play around with that to obviously get a little bit cleaner out of that image is what we're after. So going to that Milky Way, that is looking very good. Very, very good. I'm very happy how that image turned out so far. This is just global adjustment. So we've already done lens correction, which we went through and done very early on. Now I wanna go back up and I wanna make a few little tweaks, but now we wanna make them locally. So what I'm gonna do now is do a couple of things. With a graduation filter, I'm gonna hold down, shift, drag, and go basically all the way to the bottom of the tent. So what I wanna do here is I wanna go and make sure my sharpening is reduced to zero. And I'm gonna add contrast. So basically what I'm trying to do here, I'm not gonna add contrast, I just wanna go through and see what it looks like by adding highlights and shadows to the image. But remember, only where we've selected with this, obviously, graduation filter. So I'm gonna go back, double click that to reset it. Drag the highlights up, but then drag the blacks down quite a long way. And you can see I'm basically making my own contrast, but the difference that I'm doing here if I introduce contrast, it's introducing 17 of both highlights and shadows, which I don't want. I wanna choose exactly what I want. So I wanna choose a little bit of highlights, but then a lot of blacks, okay? So a lot more than what the contrast would give me. So I wanna keep around that minus 20. Let's go 20 for now. And you can see in the top and left and right hand corner, it introduces a bit of vignetting. Me personally, I don't mind this in Milky Way photography. So I'm actually gonna go back to around 15 and then this 10. 
Therefore, I want to punch in once again to check our sharpness. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So you can see, by doing the graduation filter, I've introduced just a little bit of highlights and a little bit of black. So we can go a little bit further if we wanted, you know, adjust our shadows, whatever we wanted. Actually, I'm going to introduce a little bit of white so the stars will just stand out a little bit extra also, which is quite nice. Now we could go through here and adjust our temperature. We did do it manually before, but I'm going to show you a different way how I like to personally go through and adjust the Milky Way core. So I'm going to reset that and push done. So still down here for me is a little bit too much of the green. So we could introduce a little bit more to the image and I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to introduce a little bit more of the warmer tones way too much. Okay, but now I want to go through and emphasize just this color here. So I'm going to click on the adjustment brush. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to click 50. Way too much, way, way too much. But what I want to do now is just go through and just paint over where I personally think this here could be a little bit warmer. Okay, so just adding our temperature in. And this is just in the Milky Way core we are doing this. So make sure we've got a really big feather. So make sure down below we've got a really big feather at 100. So we're not sort of crushing our image that we've already created. Just want to make sure we're sort of flowing into the image wherever the core is. Okay, looks really stupid, I understand. But what we're going to go back and just do is add like a three, a two or a three. Let's try five, no, way too much. Three and then three. Two and two. So really, really small adjustments. And what I want to go do now, reduce the sharpening to zero and just toggle this off and on. Okay, so you can see it's just adding off and on. Just the smallest bit of color into the Milky Way core, just to make it stand out that little bit extra. So we could go through and go three and three. Make it sound a little bit extra. Okay, so that's just making the Milky Way core stand out. If we go back into the adjustment layer and make quite a big brush. What I want to do right now is just get our highlights to around 14 and just brush down, oh, we have to reset the temperature because we didn't do that last time. So 14, and just brush down the Milky Way. Okay, so whites and highlights, we want to increase. And this is just going to emphasize the Milky Way itself and nothing around it. So what I'm gonna do is go down and toggle that on and off again to check our changes. So off with that and on. So maybe a little bit too strong for my taste. It's standing out a little bit too much. Let's just go 10 and reset that sharpness once again. And also 10 for the highlights. And always go back down, toggle off and on. So little subtle changes, which is much better. But down here, it's a little bit too strong, close to the tent. So I just want to make sure I get rid of some of that effect. So show the mask overlay. So I'm just going to hold down Alt and clean this up so it's only really around the Milky Way core. Okay, so that for me is pretty much a finished image of the Milky Way. There's one last thing we could go through and do, and that is a reverse half grad. And now we can go through and just make changes to the bottom half of the image if we wanted to. For me personally, I was quite happy with it. But if you wanted to show more of that, you can now emphasize the bottom half of it. So we can put 25. And then we could obviously remove some of the highlights to get that image back a little bit. So maybe minus 25 again, maybe a little too strong, minus 25, minus 20, sorry. 
But one last thing, every time we do that adjustment like that, yes, we can see more, but we want to go through and make sure we check if we have enough information to keep that. What I mean by that is how much noise is being introduced into that image. So right now, if I go back, I just want to go back into that setting and click on the half grad and make sure there's no sharpness into the image. But what we could do, denoise this image so we can just flatten it out just that ever so slightly. So I can get that information back, yes, but I'm not introducing noise. So for me, that is a pretty good finished edit. So we've done some overall global adjustments. We've done quite a few local adjustments just for the half or two thirds of the Milky Way, one third of the bottom, and some local brush adjustments for the Milky Way core. And let's look at the before and after of this image. Completely, completely different. So this you can see, it's the wrong color temp, very hard to get at nighttime. Also, we can't see any information in the bottom half of where the tent is. Now we've got so much information and then look at the Milky Way core. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely bloody beautiful. How to make your Milky Way images inside of Lightroom. Absolutely bloody Mickey Mouse. This is one lesson out of 15 lessons just inside the editing module of this course. There are seven modules in total and six hours of content for an extremely low price. But this is designed to get anyone from being a complete beginner to a more advanced editor inside of Lightroom. So the basics of Lightroom, the global versus local adjustments inside of Lightroom, and people have even contacted me saying, I've used Lightroom for years, but just you explaining what each slider or what each brush is doing inside of Lightroom makes complete sense now, and I have more confidence going forward. Module three, editing the images, which will include 65 bloody raw images from all around the world. So you can follow me step by step as we go along. You know exactly what I'm doing. Therefore, you can implement it into your photography after the course, which is absolutely fantastic. Then some exporting for social media, for that gram, for printing, for websites, everything is in there. Some advanced editing in Lightroom and some advanced editing in that beautiful Photoshop. Then there's a bonus with some PDF files and downloading those raw images. Now this can be as low as nine euros 99 when I put it on special. Some people have contacted me saying, Matt, you're an idiot. Firstly, I know I'm an idiot, don't have to tell me. Secondly, I done a vlog two weeks ago about 10K subscribers. And from the bottom of my heart, I would give these people my left bloody kidney if I could, because they are my life, they are my future, they are my bread and butter. They give me everything that I want to live my dream life. I didn't start a business to become rich. I didn't start a business to become famous. So therefore, I don't want to be rich and famous. I want to make 25, 30,000 euros a year to live the life that I've always dreamt of living. I don't want to be rich. The money can go to other people around the world to make them happy. That is all I want. So if I can give back six hours of content, it took me around 250 hours to make this course. And there is nothing held back. Everything you need to know about Lightroom is in this course. I just want to educate. I just want people to appreciate my work, be educated and grow and learn. That's pretty much all it is. I am making more courses about landscape photography, travel photography, adventure photography, nights photography, Milky Way photography. I love editing. I love educating. I love people. I love giving back. It's who I am. Hate me for it. I don't care. But it's the same as this course. So if you are interested in future courses, there'll be a link below for subscribing to my mail list so you can get fresh off the hot press release. I don't know how to say that. I'm shit at marketing. Hot off the cap on 9.99 special, but for right now, for the next four days, 9.99, drop below and buy this Lightroom course. It's lifetime access, nothing's held back. You can contact me 24 seven and ask me anything you need to know. I don't know, if you don't want to purchase it, that's fine. If you want to purchase another course, future down the track, sign up to that mailing list. But I hope you learned something today. I appreciate all your effort and support. If you have any more questions, don't give don't be afraid to give me a ring a ding ding. Guys, that's me done for today. <laughs> Ciao. Roger.
Code 101, we've got people. Oh, over, stop blogging, it's embarrassing. Oh, over, okay, granted, I understand. There's still people there.